cause of the problem with believers in the church. So I hope that we will sort of capitalize on some of the issues that bump the church, the problem with the believer. And um, I, I can't think of a more fitting lesson to start this with. Matthew 16, I quoted quickly so that we could see how we could get across in 45 minutes to our short net up tonight as well as we will leave just now. Verse 13 of Matthew 16 says, When Jesus came into the coast of Cassara, Philippi, he, or Philippi, what you want to pronounce, he asked, notice this, he asked his disciples saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Notice the word, eh? Who, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am. Verse 14. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, going that again, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Why? Why? Can such a text bring out to us a topic as the cause of the problem with believers in the church? And um, we, we could start it out quickly by saying, according to verse 13, the problem was a proper identity or identification of who Jesus is out. The outline set enough getting to know if the disciples are acquainted with his identity. So Jesus poised the question to the disciples Who do men say that I am? Now, this problem that was with Jesus to make it sure that the disciples are acquainted with the identification of him being the son of God and following his work, going about with him, with ministry, and um, you might uh, imagine what it can be, that we, we, we are in a church, I know that some people are like that, they are in a church but hardly know any things about the church. Some people will just come to church and all they want to do is pop in church quick and just sing and from the time you say amen and they're gone without knowing even regulations, uh, any background setting up the church and so forth. So here is Jesus asking this to the disciples. So the hardcore problem of what people say in verse 14, notice what is said by in verse 14. There's a hardcore problem that still exists today among the believer. Now, the believer in church now will not answer as the disciples did. But the disciples said to Jesus that some say, hey, notice that, some say, thou are Elias, others are Elias, are one of the prophets. So we, we, we find that today, and I, I, I hope that you would understand that, that that is seemingly said a problem among the church, and when we see church, we just speak in the Baptist. That some people still have a hard setting 
of identifying Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And, and um, this identification comes because of the idealistic side of the church and the doctrinal setting of the church where people like to set up things for themselves. And so some people get into church without really getting in because of Jesus Christ. Some people get into church because of, of uh, they love the, the church, they love somebody going to church, they love that church, they love the past of the church and so forth. So, so it is important that we look at it tonight, that as we discuss, pay attention to the, the question, did Jesus want to be sure that we are relating and identifying with him? So verse 15, this is what Jesus says. We still need to know today, as believers, if we could identify, like how we had that identification, what who say he that I am? So Jesus don't want to hear it from the person on the outside. He want to hear it from us as believers. And we, we, you might have um, a Harris, you might have a Lister, you might have a Keisha, you might have a Johannica, you might have a Caswell. And, and as we sit tonight, we, we still have a doubt as to really, could we really rely that Jesus is and we, could we really see the identification of Jesus? So, the, the thing here now in verse 16, we have a brave answer from a, a, a person who was always an enthusiastic in, in getting across to the business of Jesus Christ. And, and I don't know if it is because according to one of the um, reading, I think they about in, in John, in, in John chapter 1 verse 42. So if you could look there anytime from at least verse 40, but 42 specifically outlined that when people just start as the disciples just start following Jesus, he already identified Simon by name and, and he said, well, this is what you are, this is how they see you, this is what they call you, and he just quoted it quickly so that you would get an idea of it. In verse 40 of John chapter 1, hear what it says, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him, Jesus, was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. And verse 41 says, He first finds his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which has been interpreted, the Christ. In verse 42, as he, he, Peter, was brought to Jesus Christ, when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas. And by interpretation, it speaks of a stone. So we, we, we see that already from the beginning, Jesus Christ wants to pinpoint in you, Lysia, in an Akisha, in a John, in a Caswell, in a Harris. He, he wants to make a change of that name so that you will understand that the charity that you have from the beginning that you, you get to know Jesus Christ. So Peter, stand up bravely and say that thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. We go in verse 17, for instance, he stood out among everybody else. Thou art the, the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. In verse 17 says that as Jesus made the response to Peter, Jesus said, verse 17, flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now, you see, what, what is saying here is that when God calls us to the Son by the Holy Spirit, there, there must be a difference between as a, a believer, a true believer, because we, we got to understand that there are believers, not believers, and true believers. So as we get to know Jesus Christ and as we come to Jesus Christ, it, it is the importance of knowing who He is, not through flesh and blood, because um, we may come to, and there are circumstantial settings in which some people get into church to, to follow Jesus Christ, but instead of following Jesus Christ, they follow church. Because circumstantially, some people get into church because of their situations. And like I said earlier, and some people pop into church because 
they, they love this person and they love that and so much of different things bring you in and to, this come to flesh and blood but here Jesus was saying that flesh and blood Peter didn't reveal this and that the, the evidence of it that Jesus is pointing out that because upon this confession of going to in church it is the confession so when when we see in verse 18 I say unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I speak then of the confession that Peter had that he, he could identify and this is important for us as we discuss tonight that we must be able to identify who Jesus is like for instance there was a woman who could testify to the fact that Jesus is my shepherd my husband my friend my priest my king David one time says he is my rocket my fortress my high tower my pavilion but as individual believers we need to know exactly to who Jesus is how, how do we see Jesus how do Jesus impact on us in, in our lives in our everyday up and down in, in our mind the thought that we have and how does Jesus impact on our life now the, 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 the stated outline upon this rock I will build my church upon this confession I am going to build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail again. So don't forget, like I, I said, and we look at the reference there, that from the beginning when Peter come to Jesus Christ, his name was strange from what he was. And so from the stone, he, he now come in gold from stone to rock. And what, this is what Jesus does when we can be identified with Jesus Christ, not to flesh and blood, but the revelation of who he is to the Father which is in heaven. Now notice the principle of authority that is given. And this is a problem. The problem with the believers in the church and why some of the problem is caused is that um, whilst you may believe as Peter, whilst there is a revelation that is given to, to us, uh, well let me say to you as an individual, as a believer, this revelation is given that Yes, I can go out into Christ and strengthen me. And uh, you, you, you have a persuasion. And so in everything of your life, you commit it to Jesus Christ. And uh, no lying devil, no, no brother, no sister, no minister, whether it's pastor, dean, spiritual teacher, mother, whoever, cannot deter in your mind from what you are in Jesus Christ. So it is important then that we understand that being identified with Jesus, the problem that is being caused in church is because we sometimes forget Jesus and we, we, we pinpoint and this flesh and blood mentality in God's bishop and bishop and dean and mother and teacher and we just name all the different categories outlined for the church. And so we, we, we does not understand in according to the principles that Jesus is outlining here of authority in verse 19 because you have been able to be identified with who I am where this identity or this revelation is not given you by flesh and blood you being Peter and upon the confession you made are going to build the church verse 19 says because the gate of hell is not going to be filled verse 19 says I will give the the principle of authority. That's what it means. The principle of, of authority. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now the big problem here in this verse of church is that because we have not been identified and we don't take it seriously to be identified with Jesus Christ and because we have not made that wholehearted confession so that Jesus could say, well, I, I'll give you the authority. It is not just a make up something. You know? It is something that with the principle you may have the authority as a bishop, a pastor, or an evangelist, just name it in church as an officer to do certain things from the doctrinal outline of the church. But how does it work with the authority given by Jesus Christ here with the principle that is outlined I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth 
Now the problem is, is here that hand in church, you, you, you will find the authority, that principle that is outlined that you can bind somebody. Because this is an authority given, but it, it, it is not workable because we have not been making true confession. If you understand it, so that somebody pull you down, jog you down, fling your hair, fling you there, you can't bind them. You're supposed to be able, you're supposed to be able to, with that authority, if flesh and blood is not revealed, that who Jesus is to us. Yes, you see, but how I don't know Jesus. Pastor could preach here, yeah, but it is the Spirit of God that draws and brings. Mm -hmm. So with that authority, when we have that principle, people must understand, like, like the, the scripture will say, who can lay anything to the charge of God? Uh, if God be for us, who could be against Jesus. us? Be, be, yeah, and the, the other part will say, oh, don't touch the Lord and I tell them who the prophet is. No. We allow, there's a problem in church, that we allow people to, to take advantage of us, mistreat us, say how they want, how they want, and they get away, they keep getting away with it. Mm -hmm. Because we are not using the principle of authority that is given to the church, and that's a big problem. If, if you start recognizing Jesus Christ as, as the principle that is given an outline, flesh and blood had not. But you see, we get into this flesh and blood mentality where we, we believe, especially in our religion, not we're talking church generally here, so eh? Amen. But in, 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 in our religion, we believe that our charity is who can walk the spirit best. It's true. And who can walk more spirit. Amen. And who can do. Now let me tell you something. If we have the principle of authority given here by the scripture, by Jesus himself, and we are identified with Jesus and given that principle of authority is, then we don't have to go by no legal or uh, illegal stores to buy this and buy that for nothing. Hope you get here, sir. Amen. We buy in. We, we have that authority. That is if we are into the believing something that we are out of the problem being caused by believers because we have not yet capitalized and, and what Jesus would have asked. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Until we get out of this guessing thing, and this guessing, some say that thou art, mm -hmm. some say that thou art, some say, but who do you say that I am? And that, that's the problem. So, so we think, it, especially in our religion, we think that, oh, this, this pastor, Peter and and, and and the Bishop Peter, uh, uh, we think that this, this person here, it, it better, we ask, what, what is the betterness? What, what is your relationship? Because it's a question that can be asked. Amen. What is your relationship with Jesus Christ? In our religion, you ask, how does this spirit that we work, our, our go along with, work in comparison with the spirit of God? And everybody would stand up and stutter and wonder how to answer. Because the, the spirit of God, if the spirit of God works in us, we can't keep malice, we can't keep because if, if people try it long time, but one of the, our brother, St. Peter, was brave enough to say that we must lay aside all malice and guile and hypocrisy and evil speaking as newborn babes. We, we're supposed to have the, the desire for the sincere milk of the world that we may be able to grow thereby. So with this principle of authority, like I said, if we start recognizing the, the solution to the problem, if we cannot use the solution, then we are automatically part of the problem that has been causing church. Hope you understand that. Mm -hmm. So that using the solution is that we start seeing Jesus as who he is, start identifying. It might be hard because we have been accustomed to, to the seminemies and the sort of thing that people use to capitalize your mind and, and try to believe, you make you believe that, oh, unless you do this and until this is done and, and, and how it is done, it is not uh, workable. But here is Jesus saying what is workable. Eradicate your mind from this flesh and blood mentality and see the natural revelation of the Father in heaven identifying to you 
who Jesus really is. And when you see who Jesus is, and you get to know who Jesus is, the, the little problem that seems to engulf us and keep us down, Jesus of himself says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, seed, sometimes it takes faith to even speak to your own self. You, it it has to take the faith in you because if you hope tomorrow that you're going to be a better person than Jesus after we finish with this tonight, it takes faith. True. And without that faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you don't have faith to even trust God, to believe God is uh, able to do something for you, you can't have faith to bind nothing or nobody. Hope you understand that. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem by itself. So in order for a person to start to understand what it is, with the principle of authority to bind and lose, you got to start to ignore some things, like forget who said it, because you, you can't hold up. There's a problem. And, and if you don't get rid of that problem, the, the solution of solving the problem would never take place. If you're going to hold up what people say about you, and Crowell and Fred and I, I am not for the and she, you cannot use the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I hope you get it. Amen. Yeah, it's important. Mm -hmm. You got to understand that if you're going to do this, you must be walking by the Spirit of God. And so your thought has to be refined. You, you, you have to think different. You have to move different. And you're going to start to worship God. Worship God. And, and there's only two ways you can do that. It's to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And in truth, in spirit, where I am dependent in my walk, my talk, my conversation, and, and my conversation does not mean my part of speech. It means, in conversation, the lifetime. How, how, how I go about my, my business with, with God and that principle. Some of the, the problem, again, uh, major problem with the believer in church are uh, uh, the structural outline uh, and the structural outline is from a cultural aspect where we we believe that since you become a believer problems start because people set you up they're going to measure your, your belief of god and how you accept jesus christ in a juicy battle so they sometimes put you in a, a vacuum where they, they they are looking up for certain things they set them standard for your life. In, in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the person that sets the standard to his word. It's not by no, no doctrinal setting of what is done or how it is done by church because the, 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 the doctrine that will be set up by church is man-made but the, 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 like in the countries we have the constitution which should be the guide for the citizens of the country and even so now the Bible must become, for the believer, his or her constitution, because as the Bible says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light, and a light um, unto my path. path. And Jesus himself would stand to say to us that you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. As we light our candle, in coming to know Jesus, mm -hmm. be identified with him, recognize who he is, and get to know the revelation, the what? The Christ, the Son of the Living God. I'm going to stop there for this moment and hear, hear from you. What are some of the problems that you think uh, is caused in the church by the believers? What are some of the problems? There are so many problems, and so we go look at them tonight. Some of them. And don't forget that if we are not part of the solution with the problem, then we are part of the problem. Understand that. So, we have um, Pastor Caswell, Deaconess, John Evangelist, and uh, the Ambassador, Sister Mo. So, problem. 